there at Malta in the summer of 1940. The RAF, during the previous spring, had deployed a mere handful of nearly obsolete Gladiator fighter aircraft to the Hellfar airfield near Grand Harbour and the town of Valletta. They were to provide a token air defence against the anticipated overwhelming numbers of enemy bombers and fighters. At no time during the summer of 1940 were more than three gladiators ever available to be launched on a scramble or sortie against the enemy. Many days, only a single aircraft could take to the skies against scores of incoming Italian bombers and fighters. These aircraft were flown by inexperienced RAF pilots who had never been combat tested. Three of these took the lead and were most active in the defence against overwhelming odds. Flying officers George Burgess, John Waters and Timber Woods. All the people of Malta ultimately came to think of this modest defensive force as a single entity comprised of just three gladiators. And all the people of the British Commonwealth informally christened this mythical force of three faith, hope, and charity.
Early on the morning of the 11th of June, 1940, the battle began. Sparrow 1, this is Tower. How are you receiving me? Over. Tower, this is Sparrow 1. Loud and clear, over. Sparrow Flight, you are clear for takeoff when ready. Sparrow 2, this is Sparrow 1. How do you read me? Over. Uh, I read you fine, George. I, I mean, Sparrow 1. Receiving you loud and clear. Sparrow 3, how, how do you read me? Over. I can hear you fine, Johnny. Well, George, let's get this show on the road, eh? What? We wouldn't want to miss the opening curtain, now, would we? Very good, Timber, but just remember who's in charge. Right, Sparrow Flight, here we go. Let's look professional, gentlemen. Perfect, I'd say, Johnny. Do you think that lady friend of yours might be up this early? I hope she saw that fine takeoff of ours. She's got the early shift at the hospital, Timber. I expect she'll see us when we pass over the harbour. Sparrow 1, this is Tower. 20 plus bandits, vector 015-40 miles at Angels 15, over. Tower, this is Sparrow 1. Okay, understood. I am steering 015 and climbing hard to Angels 15. Over. Alright, gents. No more chatter. Let's get to work. Johnny, 
More bombers coming in. Turn inside him. Just like in practice. Listen, one in the manual, boy. Bloody good show down there. That eye tie was smoking, no doubt. I was just about to jump in and lend you a hand. No need, George. It was as easy as sitting down for some tea and scones. Tea? That's a tip-top idea, gents. Jolly good show, eh, what? Sparrow 3, bit have you been off to a timber, over. Had a bit of a go at hunting myself, Georgie. Might have gotten one, but he made off into the clouds. <laughs> Not over a tangle at all. Okay, Sparrow Flight, good work. Now, form up on me and we will head for home. Over. Let's put a bit more coal on the fire and head on downstairs, shall we, Georgie boy? No more ice eyes here to play with anyway. Looks like they've all hightailed it out of here. And I've got a visiting Aussie Sheila waiting for me at the pub in Valletta this afternoon. Ho ho! Cheerio, chaps. Stay in formation, Johnny. Let Timber have his bit of fun if it makes him feel good. We'll maintain good form. I understand, George. I'm right here on your wing, sir. And let's show the gentleman in the tower a proper smooth landing. Shall we, Johnny? Understood, sir.
Altitude again, ready to bat. Have the ITIs taken to the field yet this afternoon? Over. Negative, Mr. Waters. Maintain patrol vicinity of Comuna Island. Over. Will do, gentlemen. I'll just be stooging about. Get on the blow when you need me. Over. This is your fourth go, Sparrow 2. We'll call it a day after this one. No problem, Tower. I can bloody well use the practice. Sparrow 2, Tower, you've got company. 12 bandits approaching Califrana at Angels 12. Vector 060, over. Sorry chaps, my hands are full with this bunch of sods at the moment. That other group will have to get by without me. Over. Tower, water's here again, returning to base. I'll need a bit of a patch up on my right wing. Took a bit of a whacking this time. Gather up the maintenance boys, would you? I'd like to come back up top again before we lose all our light. Here. Has my boss made it back yet from that bloody HQ meeting? I'm afraid not, sir. You're still the star of today's matinee, it seems. set a limit of six sorties for you today. Over. Ah, uh, bloody hell. Understood, but advise the old man that I'm good for a few more wickets. Over. This is the old man, Mr. Waters. Over. Sparrow 2 here. Yes, sir. Receipt acknowledged. Over. Six sorties, Flying Officer Waters. Out. Understood, sir. Six it shall be, sir. Over. Tower, water's here again. My compass seems to be belly up at the moment and I can't quite make out the field. Over. Understood, Mr. Waters. We'll turn on the Porsche light for you. Just one second. Thank you, gents. That did the trick. Lights out now. Don't want the eye ties following me in. Over. Sparrow 
Tower. Excellent landing, sir. Spot on. Very smooth indeed. Well, not quite, Tower, but as they say, practice makes perfect, gents. That'll be it for the day, Mr. Waters. Well done, sir. Bloody well done. In those early days of the war, there was still time for a young pilot to find moments of peace to share with a loved one. But soon those cherished moments would be no more, and love would be set aside, perhaps never to be found again. For war has its unique way of replacing joy with its own very special demands for our attention and for our sacrifice. The days of June passed quickly as the air battle in the skies above intensified. With an heroic effort, the RAF managed to continually repair and maintain their tiny fleet of gladiators, establishing a force capable of launching as many as three aircraft to sortie against the enemy. Not all attacks could be turned back, of course. The numbers were just too overwhelming. Inevitably, Malta suffered. Just as in the months to follow back home, even London itself would be the target of massive bombing raids. Day after day, three gladiators rose above Malta to drive off or destroy the enemy forces. The people below watched faith, hope and charity rise into the skies in their defense at dawn, at dusk and throughout the long summer days. Flight. This is Sparrow 1, single banded at 3 o'clock low. Looks like a single reconnaissance bird, over. Sparrow 2, understand. I see him, over. Johnny, you go on first boy. I think he spotted us, so watch out for their gunners. Especially that tail end Charlie, over. Sparrow 2 here, will do sir. Keep your speed up, right on down and by him. Don't sneak about fancy flying in his arse end. OK, George, understood. I'm off. Sparrow 2 here. I seem to have caught a bit of a packet on that one, George. You okay, Johnny? <laughs> Took a few punches. A bit scratched up. Didn't shoot off my ghoulies, though, but I think I might best depart the wicket, George, if that's okay. Okay, Johnny. You got some hits tonight, the They are good work. Now just try and get home safely. Make sure the boys put your kites back in tip-top shape. Remember, the lads and lasses of Malta, they will expect to see Old Hope flying again tomorrow. OK, George. Sparrow 2 breaking off and heading for home. Over. Timber here. I'll cover this one for you, Johnny. Negative, Timber. Take Johnny's wing for his trip home. Looks like he might have some control damage. Over. OK, George. Nursemaid I shall be. Watch your backside out there. You're on your own, George. See you back at the base. Not too worried, Timber. I'll just finish off this one bobber that Johnny set up for me. Tower, 
Sparrow One here, over. Go ahead, Sparrow One, over. Be advised, several eye ties bailed from their craft and undertaken a swim in the North Camino Channel. You might want to send out the wrong area for a pickup, over. Will do, Sparrow One. Good show. We'll chuck one bomber up on the scoreboard for you. Over. The cloud ceiling is dropping rapidly out here, Tower. I'll be heading back home. Keep an eye out for Johnny and Timber. They should be back in a few minutes. Two for today's chalkboard. It was a bit of a sticky wicket out here, but I managed to ball it a match. It's on the deck in the hills east of Victoria. That makes for a good turn at bat today, eh, Mr. Burgess? We'll send some boys out to pick up the pilot. Over. No hurry, Tower. He's definitely bought the farm. Sparrow 3, Sparrow 1 here. Timber, how are you and Johnny doing? Close to home, and just enough time to spare for a low harbour flyby to show the girls my new serial number. C for charity. Hehe, <laughs> what? The girls will just love that. And me. Ho <laughs> ho! Johnny, how's she holding up, old chap? Well, don't worry, Tim, but there's still plenty of fight in the old girl yet. I'll get her down fine. Not sure I can say the same for the pilot, though. Tower, this is Sparrow 2. Tower, 
tower here. Go ahead. Over. Tower, I've managed to pick up a few scratches this morning. Request a straight in approach and maybe have a pretty nurse nearby. Sparrow 2, this is Tower. Understood, Johnny. Turn on to final as soon as you clear the harbour, then bring it on in. Weather is rolling in, so best be quick about it, sir. We'll be ready for you. Good luck. Over. Hey, Johnny. Not your usual form there, old man. Have you been nicking Georgie's beer rations again? Just a minor problem. I haven't been able to push the damn rudder pedals since that... I thought I put some lead through my legs. Bloody kneecaps are god-awful pain, Timber. Shot to hell. This is going to be a textbook landing just like it in practice. I promise. Don't be a damn fool, Johnny. You're all over the place. And those thunderclouds are looking quite bad. I see them, Timber. Not to worry. Climb back up to a thousand and bail out, man. We need you more than we need old Hope. And anyway, I need someone to pay me bar bill before next payday. You're all hard, Sean. But Molten needs this kite. Okay, switching radio off now to concentrate. Last one at the bar buys the next round. Old friend. Two, tower, we'll be ready for you. Good luck, over. Burgess and Timberwoods went up again just hours later. And in the following days, when only one gladiator was in shape to fly, they would alternate and go off solo to engage the enemy squadrons. From the doorways of the quayside shops and pubs, the people of Malta watched. From the government buildings, the government and military staff watched. From the hospital on the hillside above the harbour, we watched. We all watched them rise daily into the skies. Now, just faith and charity left to do the job. On the 20th of July, they were up together. George, with the Jerry's beginning to cross the channel now back home, do you think we'll ever get reinforced down here with those hurricanes? You believe in fighter command promises, Timber? <laughs> Jolly good point, Georgie. I suppose if we want those hurricanes, we should take a bit of a side trip to Bermuda, eh, what, Georgie? Ha ha ha. Seriously, God knows we could use some help out here. What's up, Timber? Not your usual cocky self today. Tally Hall, bandits, two o'clock and four o'clock low. Let's get back to work, Timber. Okay. Time to go out and earn the King's shilling, eh? I'll take the high time fighters. See you later at the pub, Georgie. Blood 
Bloody hell, Georgie. Blogs couldn't even offer me a bloody baker's dozen. This is gonna go badly for them. Oh, Johnny would have enjoyed this match. Good luck, Timber. I'm going after these bombers. Give me a shout if you need some help. God, George, I'm having one hell of a good time down here. I'm the fox in the hen house, Georgie. Understood, Timber. Have your fun, but watch your arse. Over. Just keep your knickers on, old boy. Much appreciated, old chap. Meanwhile, I'll just give these blows. Bloody hell. I'm sorry, Timber.
October, Sparrow 1. I'm a bit banged up. Coming straight in, over the harbour, over. Sparrow 1, tower. Understand, you are cleared for landing, over. Sparrow 2, tower here, over. Sparrow 2, tower calling, acknowledge, over. Sparrow 2, tower calling, over. Shut it down, tower. Timbers not coming home. In the days that followed, George Burgess continued to patrol the skies alone, knowing his days were numbered. Finally, on an otherwise uneventful patrol in early August, he heard words through his headset that surely must have chilled his bones, for it would have been clear to him that the final die had been cast. Sparrow 1, tower, over. Go ahead, tower, over. Sparrow 1, uh, George, incoming bandits, lots of them, George. Vector 110, 15 miles, Angels 1 on the deck, over. <coughs> George, are you receiving? Over. Sparrow 1 here, understood. Incoming bandits, how many did you say? We estimate 30, George. Three zero, and it looks like they're all fighters. George, I say again, it's a fighter sweep. Estimate 30 fighters. Do you acknowledge your receipt? Over. Sparrow 1, tower. Do you understand? Minimum 3-0 fighters. Over. Understood, tower. 30 fighters. Be advised, tower. I'll be taking them on a dozen at a time. That's the way old timber which would have done it. George, George, the CEO says you have permission to return to base. It's pointless to engage. Negative. I owe this to Timber and Johnny. It's going to get busy out here, Timber. Sparrow 1, out. Off now an RTB. That's a bloody order, Lieutenant. I'm afraid that's a bit of a tall order at the moment, sir. I'm not precisely in the driver's seat if you catch my drift, sir. These eye ties seem to quite enjoy the pleasure of my company. Well then, you just hang on, George. Okay, sir. I'll do my best, but don't keep the lights on for me. It's getting a little bit sticky out here. Sparrow one, out. <laughs> Ah. 
your starboard wing, over. Eagle One, good to see you, chaps. Hope you don't mind us crashing your party without an invite, Sparrow One. Quite all right, you're forgiven. This time. Anyway, you'll soon find out there's always plenty to go around here at Malta. Sparrow One, Eagle One here. I see a lot of civilians down there on the docks watching us, sir. This is your show. You've earned it. We'll be off. Good luck getting your bird down. She looks the worse for wear. Cheerio. Eagle Squadron, break off. George surely did think his number was up that day, especially when Faith's engine gave up the ghost, short of the airfield. Of course, he did die, but not until many years after the war's end may he rest in peace. God knows how the old sod managed to do it, but land safely, he did. Not long afterwards, King George VI himself came to Malta to present the inhabitants of the island with the George Cross. I was there to see the event in the very front row. As the King and Queen passed by me heading to the podium, both impeccably dressed, the King in his naval uniform, it seemed that they both glanced down at me, almost as if they knew me personally. The King presented a letter along with the George Cross. To the Governor of Malta, to honour her brave people, I award the George Cross to the island fortress of Malta to bear witness to a heroism and devotion that will long be famous in history. I then watched with pride as the King turned and presented the distinguished flying cross to the man who had led us pilots through those dark days, Flight Lieutenant George Burgess. I was so proud of George that day. Directly after the DFC had been pinned to his chest, he stepped away from the king and walked over to me. Behind him, I saw that the king was watching, smiling ever so slightly. My friend George then knelt down beside me, knowing of course that I could not rise from my wheelchair and would never again be able to do so. Tears filled his eyes and mine. I'll never forget the words he spoke so softly only I could hear. Johnny Waters, old oh, Johnny boy, it was your courage that inspired the rest of us when you took Old Hope up alone again and again on that very first day of our war. He removed his DFC and pinned it to my hospital robe, saying, this should be on your chest, Johnny. He then stood and saluted me, as did the king standing behind him. It was the greatest moment of my life. I felt tears welling in my eyes as George's final words came over me, crisp and clear, as if he were standing in this room beside me now. Wear this for all of us, and for faith, hope and charity.
squadron. That's here. Hey. Gentlemen, the commander. Top of the day, gents. Take your seats, please. Thank you, Miss Lynn. Quite a beautiful song from a lovely lady. I'm sure the chaps are thoroughly enjoying the show. And a jolly good show it is, eh what chaps? But we've got to get about doing the king's business. What with there being a war going on and all. Let me just say this. Good work yesterday, gentlemen. Let's take a look, shall we? Excellent gunnery, Rawlinson. You also, Pelly. And Boyd, you almost buggered yours, I'd say. Almost too close, eh, what? <laughs> the Gladiator Boys. Faith, Hope and Charity, of the locals have been calling them. Did a bloody good job of holding down the fort. <clears throat> now it's our turn to pick up the bat. Step to the crease and have our go at this Italian team. And it's not all going to be as easy as yesterday. The element of surprise and all that, you what? Gave them a bit of the old Sun Tzu, I'd say. <laughs> and, chaps, mark my word, Jerry's will be joining the show before the year is out. Gentlemen, dismissed, man your aircraft.